What's good y'all, welcome back. We're gonna see how long this video takes. It was only a five game slate, but I got a decent amount to say, man. And I think I'm gonna start with the last game of the night, the Jazz and the Clippers. First off, leave a like, subscribe if you are new. But Paul George is back for the Clips, and they needed him because it's a team that's been struggling. And I will admit, I have not watched a lot of Clippers basketball probably over like the last month. Um, they've just been dealing with a lot, a lot of injuries and stuff. And they've been struggling a lot lately. They've went into this game three games under 500 but Paul George gave this team life and they looked lifeless for about three quarters and then end of the third they made a nice run got back into the game Paul George really took over in the second half I believe he had 25 plus points maybe in the second half he was elite it's great to see him back on the court man and he really helped this helped this team out tonight and it begs the question of how scary they can be as a playing team with PG being back the rumors that Kawhi could potentially be back at some point who knows but just them alone having Paul George back gives this team a lot of hope. Already a team that plays with so much heart. They're so well coached with Tyron Lue. This team could be a scary up for anybody that they play in the first round. Whether it's the Suns, whether it's the Grizzlies, or maybe the Warriors. They can be a scary up for any team, man. And I'm excited to see what they can potentially do if they do get into the playoff field. But as good as the Clippers were, and Isaiah Hartenstein was big for them off the bench. Um, Reggie Jackson was doing his thing. Norm Powell is supposed to be coming back potentially soon by the time the playoffs start. The Utah Jazz, man. The Jazz. It's it's looking like it's just looking like the same old story and maybe even a worse version of it, man. Um, it seems like it's like this every game, especially lately. Donovan Mitchell plays amazing. The rest of the team just isn't there. This game was even worse because they went up big. They were up like 20, maybe 22 points at one point. I'm not sure where their biggest lead were, but they were up. And they were comfortably up for a majority of this game. And then the wheels just completely fell off. Um, it, I said this in previous videos. It'll take a lot for this Jazz team to come back with the same core next year. They would have to make a very deep playoff run. And I don't see it happening, man. This seems like a team that is pretty much lifeless at this point in the season. Um, it seems like every other week, Rudy Gobert is saying something in the locker room that's along the lines of, we're not playing good defense and the offense is not fluid even though they're one of the best offenses in basketball, but I get what he's saying, because a lot of it is Donovan Mitchell. But when you have other guys that just aren't creating that much and Rudy can't create in the post, it's like, what else are they supposed to do? This seems in shambles. One of the few teams that we're gonna to talk tonight in shambles, well, maybe one of two, but they are in shambles. And right now, I think they would still be matched up with the Dallas Mavericks in the first round, who we're gonna talk about in a second. And I will comfortably take the Mavericks in that series like that that's a spoiler i will comfortably take the dallas mavericks in that series man um these two teams are playing like polar opposite of each other and the fact that the clipper i mean the jazz on the road tonight had a big lead and completely blew it to a team with their star player just coming back and basically pg played a lot of minutes like he was not on any minutes restriction he played a lot of minutes this game in his very first game back played 30 minutes and you allowed him reggie jackson and isaiah hardenstein to really give it to y'all and luke Kennard too he had a big shot down the stretch shout out to luke Kennard. Problems in Utah. Big problems in Utah. I didn't think that was going to be the main topic tonight, but it ended up being that. Um, the other team in LA, they're in shambles. They've been in shambles all season long. And tonight was no different. They gave up 82 points in the first half to the Dallas Mavericks. LeBron didn't play, but I feel like I, feel like I just have to say this because Laker fans, LeBron fans, they're giving me the same reason for this team not being what they were supposed to be before the season started, which was a championship team. And it's like, well, they've dealt with a lot of injuries, which is true. They have dealt with a lot of injuries. AD's missed most of the season. LeBron's missed a significant amount of time too, even though he's been amazing when he has played. Kendrick Nunn, I guess, hasn't played the whole season. I'm not here to, I'm not trying to hear all that stuff anymore, man. Even when they were fully healthy, AD was out there, Braun was out there, Russ was out there. When they had their guys, they weren't playing that good anyways. They weren't playing that good anyways. And we talked so much about what's wrong with this team. It's more than one thing. It's not just Frank Vogel. It's not just the front office. It's not just AD not playing or Russell Westbrook's inconsistent play. It's a whole bunch of different things. This team cannot defend to save their lives. I don't know if I just said it, but 82 points given up in the first half. You're not winning basketball games that way. If AD's on the court, is he gonna make that much of a difference? This team just cannot defend at all. They're a bad defensive team. They weren't that good with AD and they're much worse without him. And even when he was out there, you could say he averaged 24 and 10. You can say that. And I might get to rank here. You can say he averaged 24 and 10. That's fine. 
his 24 and 10 was not as impactful as some other people's 24 and 10. And that's just that's just being honest, man. I mean, somebody that had high hopes for AD. If you've been around the channel long enough, you know I had AD top three in both MVP and Defensive Player of the Year before the season. And even when he was on the court, he wasn't living up to that expectation. So you can't just say, well, if AD was there, this team would be better. They might be 500 at best with Anthony Davis on the court. It's just sad to say, man. Um, their season might be over. Right now, they're tied for the 10 seed. We don't know what the extent of Ron's ankle injury is. We don't know if he's going to be back. Not 100% sure. I saw Chris Haynes said something earlier tonight. But even if they do come back, man, and they do sneak in the playoffs, I don't see this team being much of anything. I don't see them being much of anything, man. Just a, a wild season, man. Um, I'll say this, though. Shout out to Russ. He's been playing over the last couple weeks. He's been playing pretty good basketball. I'll say that much. He's been playing good basketball, man. But the Mavs, we talk so much about them, man. When this offense is clicking, tough team to stop because Luka's already that good. He can will this team to wins by himself. But when you got guys really shooting the lights out, when you got Dinwiddie playing well, Jalen Brunson, Dorian Finney-Smith, even Maxi Kleber hitting shots, team's going to be tough to beat. And they even got Dwight Powell back to playing like he was before the injury in the bubble where, you know, that pick and roll between him and Luka was pretty elite. It was one of the best in the league. And they're looking like that again, man. I mean, when I was watching, you know, parts of this game, there were several times where they were getting lobs off of the pick and roll. Super elite, man. The Mavs, scary team to play in that first round of the postseason, no matter who they match up with, especially if it's the Jazz. The next game I got to watch a bulk of, 76ers bucks. This is a very good game. Closely contested. Um, James Harden looked good. Joel looked cool. And B looked cool. But Giannis was the best player on the floor. And it kind of wasn't close, man. Giannis was dominant both sides of the floor, like he always is. 40, 14, and 6 assists. Doesn't even begin to show the impact in the way that he was playing, man. He was in his bag. There was a play. I think it was end of the third quarter. And Giannis high passion. There was like four seconds left on the clock. He caught it behind half court. Took like one dribble, maybe two dribbles, and got all the way to the basket and dunked before the but before zeros were even on the clock. Dude was incredible. He had some clutch shots tonight. He had a pull-up jump shot that was real clutch. And then had the game save and block with Joel and B down there. Giannis making that late push for MVP. I'm not here to talk about MVP too much. I've kind of dragged that topic out a lot. But this is a good game. Um for Philly, I got questions. I do got questions about this team. Um, but I will say I don't think this year is their window. I think it expands at least into next season. We'll see what they do in the offseason. But they still have a chance. That's the thing. They still have a chance. The East is still pretty open. But if I had to pick a team that I was most confident in, it would be the Milwaukee Bucks. And they're getting healthy at the right time, which is key, when teams around them, like the Boston Celtics, are not as healthy as they once were. So that's a key thing. Getting them going to the postseason. Brooke Lopez starting to get his rhythm back just a little bit. I like to see that for the Bucks. Um, one of the last couple games of the night, the Pistons and the Nets. The Pistons have just been playing competitive basketball. Kate Cunningham's amazing, but Brooklyn got the win tonight because KD is that guy, man. One of the most, if not the most effortless scorer I've ever witnessed in my life. His hezzy pull up is nasty. He really just catches the ball and he just goes to work, man. Very simple game, very, just elite, man, elite. And even when, you know, this team has, you know, been having guys out all season long, you know, before Kyrie could play at home when James Harden was missing games. KD was willing to see no victories early on in the season. People forget that so much because he missed so much time. But man, 41 points on 23 shots, 61% from the field, 67 from three. Do so elite. 11 boards, five assists to go along with that. Super elite. Um, but I do want to give a shout out to Cade. Cade played really well like he has, you know, since the first couple weeks of his season, which people really were ready to write him off already, which is so weird. But he's been elite. He's making the rookie of the year race a little more compelling. Um, 34, I think that's a career high. On 13 and 24 shooting, so pretty efficient. Hit five three pointers, man. Dude's gonna be special. He already is special, man. And I like what the I said this so so many times. I like what the Pistons have moving forward. And to be honest, I did not watch. This is the only game I did not tune into at all. It was the Bulls and the Wizards. Looks like the Bulls got the win. The Bulls got the win. Didn't look like it might have not been a very pretty game, but they did get the victory, which is much needed for them because they've been struggling. And that playing race is getting tighter and tighter with the, with the Eastern Conference. I think there's like maybe a game separating them, the Cavs, and the Raptors. I think the Raptors moved up to the sixth seed. The Bulls are at the five. Cleveland's at the seven. So these last couple weeks are going to be hectic. Also saw the Wizards got some new uniforms at their debut next season. 
and I actually like them. They're actually pretty decent. I can't wait to see the other teams release their uniforms because I like reacting to those. But if you did make it to this point in the video, I really do appreciate you. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. This is three days in a row. I don't know the last time I updated three days in a row. But we're going to keep it going tomorrow. I'm sure there's a big slate of games on Wednesday night because there always is. I appreciate y'all. Catch y'all next time. Peace.